Um, thanks for having me. Hello, hello. So I'm a second year um, PhD student in the Italian Studies program, and um, I'm just going to share screen real quickly. Um, so I'm also a visual artist. So my background is in um, in drawing and painting and social practice as well as um, Italian studies. Um, this summer, I um, had an artist residency in, um, in Palermo at the Orto Botanico. Um, and I was there for kind of two reasons that overlapped. Um, so one, um, I was there to actually research a little bit about um, the history of Italian colonialism um, and its intersection with agriculture um, in Sicily. So this this space, this particular garden was built um, kind of in an imitation of the royal gardens um, in, in the late 1700s um, with the idea that its warmer climate would be a better pose to try uh, growing some of the the more tropical plants that they were hoping to collect and, and study. Um, and uh, the challenge of this place is that it's really beautiful. <laughs> the plants are really beautiful and the history is really, really complicated. Um, and so I was really interested in spending some time as an artist and a researcher thinking about um, the way that kind of colonial history is obscured by the beauty of the plants themselves and these carefully curated spaces that seem like they exist somehow separate from everyday life, but really are, you know, um, deeply embedded in all of the complicated things that um, are being worked out in the Mediterranean right now. So um, really briefly, um, the history of the garden is that it was um, originally founded by Spanish viceroys. Um, it was almost like a it's almost like a shrine to Linnaeus. Linnaeus is everywhere there. And the original plans of the garden are all kind of, um, you know, structured by the Linnaean system, but it's still managed by the University of Palermo and, and really has been almost ever since. So it's a working laboratory, but it's also, um, you know, crazy beautiful and um, has a lot of art history references and kind of pseudo mythological references um, and art hidden uh, within it. Um, so my residency proposal was to work there for a month, and um, I was given a studio space in the garden um, right in the middle of it and permission to go work with whatever plants I want. Um, but they also have an archive, um, a, a library in the garden that's currently closed um, that has an archive of the history of the garden. And it's not open to the public, but I was allowed to go in there and research this text that I'm really interested in. This was a series of journals um, that was published by this guy, a little hard to see in the photo, Antonino Borzi. Um, he was kind of a big proponent of Italian colonialism, and he worked on trying to get Palermo to be important in Italy's plan to take over um, territories in North Africa. Um, and he he felt that that could be a way to resolve some issues with um, the South being underutilized or undervalued in a kind of post-unification period. So he was trying to make himself and uh, Sicily important in this way. These are um, some of the trees that he planted in that time. And only some of those Bolletino, the journals that he wrote were are online. Most of them are kind of hidden away in this library. So I would do things like go sit under this tree for a while and draw it and then go research in the archives um, and read about what he thought it might do. They were hoping it would be, um, you know, alternative rubber production. These are other trees that were um, built um, or planted, sorry, at the time he was there. So he was very much looking at like industrial kinds of plants. Um, and uh, plants that would be useful for food or um, or lumber or medicine, things like that. Um, so bananas um, were big, coffee was big, but of course there's an older history in Sicily, I won't go into detail about the sacredness of gardens and this garden is on the territory of this older, the Genoard, um, this older kind of hunting ground that goes back to the Norman era um, and, and even the more <laughs> era. Sorry. So the uh, the trees are super sacred in a lot of ways, um, and I'm interested in the overlap of that. So um, I had a um, a short exhibition of the work I uh, created during my time there. Um, this was my exhibition poster and a little bit about um, what my plan was. And um, basically, I was looking at a series of trees. So that giant ficus that he had, but also bamboo. Um, there's this cheba. A tree that makes kind of a um, almost an alternative to cotton. Um, they were obsessed with cotton at this time, and of course citrus and all of this other kind of stuff. 
Um, a little bit of preparation. One of the things I did before I left was I made a bunch of walnut ink. Um, I was interested in the brown color um, and the kind of nostalgic vibes it invoked around um, things that complicate our ability to um, consider the past. <laughs> um, and um, the walnut ink basically is bo boiled down walnuts from a tree in my own garden. Um, so that was a little process before I left. And this is kind of what it looks like, um, something I made later. Um, some other research I did before I left was thinking about kind of hybrid monster plants, <laughs> plants that are, you know, um, invested with a lot of hope um, for saving the future or solving all our problems, um, but become terrifying in their uses. Um, so I was creating kind of some hybrid plants or like brainstorming hybrid um, hybridities from that kind of colonial era of Italy. But of course, there's a lot of similarities now. Um, to answer your question, um, the the first tree is it's a ficus tree. It's actually from Australia. Um, I think that one that I showed you a photo of is is about 180 years old. And I was playing around with these roots. So the way those um, ficus trees work is the roots touch the ground and they expand and these trees were planted all over Palermo and thrived. Um, so they kind of take over parks and things like that. Um, these are some installation shots of the work that I made there. So I wound up having a little show right in the middle um, of the of the Orto Botanico in a like a scientific exhibition space. Um, and I tried to use some of these little vitrines as um, places to think about individual trees. Um, so for example, bananas, <laughs> which were a big hope um, in the kind of colonial era for food, for cheap, affordable food, but have become a more realistic hope now with climate change where there's bananas everywhere. Um, and I was able to look at the banana trees that were planted at that time, read about him planting them in, in his bulletino, and then go out and paint them or play around with their leaves, things like that. So these are painted studies with the walnut ink of the banana trees. I also played around with um, just the leaves themselves from other trees. So this is um, some experimental stuff I was doing with the bamboo, <laughs> um, giant monster bamboo there um, that they were using for um, timber, for lumber, um, scaffolding and things like that. And so thinking about weaving them in ways, um, doing studies, um, and then eventually also collecting kind of vintage frames and using them to think about the kind of complicated positioning of our ancestors. <laughs> so uh, this portrait um, here in the frame is of Antonino Borzi, um, but there's, you know, Linnaeus in there and um, a couple of other important figures in the garden. Um, I worked with the um, Sangue del Drago, the, the dragon's blood trees are really big there. Um, so this was a whole part of the garden that was planted as a colonial research uh, station, so a place to practice growing colonial plants, but also training colonial um, farmers. And so I was able to kind of do paintings from what's left of that space. Okay, I will wrap it up. Um, I'm, I'll just share the last slide, which is just that at the end, um, kind of as a resistance to, I don't know what products and um, objects, most of the natural fiber works went back into the compost pile um, in the place that they were. So the, the weavings and all of that returned to their original place and many of the paintings stayed um, in the ortho. Okay, I will stop there. Thank you.